Prince Harry skips uh, Prince Philip's memorial because it's not safe. Is that really what's going on? That's what this video is going to be about. So I hope you like the video. If you do like it, you know, like it. And if you haven't subscribed, you know, subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. We seem to be so wrapped up in what Harry's doing and why he's doing it, or is Meghan controlling him? And, you know, I've just got to remind you, I'm not on the hate Meghan and Harry bandwagon. I'm just not. So, uh, you, I went to some links that you folks have suggested and see that you're tuning in to readers who are biased. Not to say that not hating Meghan and Harry doesn't make me uh, not biased because you would think that makes me biased in the favor of them. But what I try to do is just read the cards exactly the way they come out and not try to lend um, uh, my interpretation into them. That's why you'll find that I try to get through the interpretations pretty quickly so my brain doesn't have time to interject uh, my biases uh, in there. That's, that's my attempt anyway. Okay, so this is going to be about Prince Harry uh, skipping the Prince Philip Memorial because it's not safe. How much weight does that carry? Prince Harry is keeping the Prince Philip Memorial because it's not safe. Prince Harry and that memorial for Prince Philip, not safe. That's the question. What about Prince Harry skipping that Prince Philip Memorial because not safe? What can the cards tell us about that? But first, let's have a moment of meditation. Okay. Prince Harry, it's not safe. So what's up with that? Um, I would say he's come to some pretty painful realizations about uh, what's happened in the past with his mom and what he saw, what he perceived as what was happening with his own uh, marriage. And um, and the, the caution that uh, his wife had about what she was seeing. Remember, uh, Americans, we are not used to this um, devotion to a cause, which is what's required of a um, member of the royal family. So, let's have six cards. Prince Harry, skipping the Prince Philip memorial service. Three, four, okay, five and six. Prince Harry, skips that Prince Philip Memorial Service. What could the cards tell us? Signifier card, the chariot. Things coming at a rapid pace. Not clear. I'm not sure what that means. The chariot, things happening at a rapid pace. Major Arcana, number seven. Challenge by, two of cups, partnerships. Yeah, oath taking. Um, yeah, this challenge. So, things happening at a rapid pace. Challenge by, lovers. Interesting. Based on this reading is the Hermit. Taking your time before you make a step forward. You've got a plan in hand. You're not ready to use it, okay, because you want to see uh, ahead uh, where you have to go. Chariot moving too fast. Challenged by the lovers. Needing to take some time to see where you're going, but things are moving so fast. In the past of this reading, Seven of Rods, having to fend off lots of actions against you. Ro ro rods are uh, plans, uh, actions, forward movement. And so, yeah, in the past, this is what he had. Things were moving along at a rapid pace. There wasn't time to digest what was going on for this, this uh, two lovers as a unit. Uh, wanting to take their time to see what's going on, but having to fend off lots of actions. In the sky of this, this Nine of Cups is uh, called the Happy Merchant. This is the fella in the sky, uh, the fella who's ready to show, Cups are emotions, compassion, passion. And this fellow is very happy to show off his trophies of compassion and emotions that he had. So that's in the sky. Not sure about that yet. And the likely outcome for this first part, uh, this dyadic cross, is the King of Pentacles, the King of Value. The King of Value. 
I want to say perhaps this is Charles, but I'm not sure. This reading I may have to encapsulate at the end. So the last four cards were Prince Harry skipping that Prince Philip Memorial. What is that about? First card, signifier, the self of that very question. Is this ten of rods a heavy load? Uh, rods are uh, actions, plans, and this fella is able to push that heavy load up the hill. Um, it can be done. It may take a few trips. It's going to be difficult, or maybe it won't get accomplished, but it's, this is the signifier card of this. is that This is a lot of plans, a lot to get done, and it's hard. The um, environment that that's in, the world card, end of a cycle. It is in the environment of the monarchy coming to an end and a new monarch uh, stepping up. Not the monarchy coming to an end. I hope that wasn't Freudian slip. But the uh, monarch's reign coming to an end and a new monarch uh, stepping up. End of a cycle. Um, the hopes and the fears for that. Then magician. Finding that magical mix with all the everything's available to you. You've just got to find the right tool to use. And then the uh, likely outcome of this, Philip uh, Phillips Memorial and Harry, oh, is the tower, the disaster. So... Uh, yeah, it's uh, uncomfortable. It's something that's broken that now is going to have to be repaired. Okay. So, Prince Harry not going to Prince Philip's memorial. It's signified, signified by things we're just coming on to quickly. The two needed time to digest. Understanding where they're going to put their foot next. Fending off lots of uh, actions and plans. Someone very eager to display their emotional value. Maybe this was perhaps the image that the monarchy wanted to put forth. They were, we're endlessly happy. We're wonderful to get this done. But is that living a truth? And then the likely outcome <coughs> of that first part is Charles, a very sad-looking king of value. The self of that question with this ten of rods, it's a heavy load to push up the hill. Get it, finding your trust in this system that you're so unfamiliar with for the wife's point of view. And uh, in the environment of the end of a cycle, this uh, sad king is trying to make sure the end of one cycle um, benefits the beginning of the next cycle. The uh, hopes and the fears, finding that magic mix that makes everything work. And in the end is the tower. Something's destroyed. Something has to be rebuilt. And something has to have attention given to it. So I forgot. Well, tell me how well you think I did. Did I uh, was I able to block my biases? Was I reading the cards as they actually came out? And um, but you have to remember the uh, definitions that a reader uses are personal to them and are different with all the readers. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang okay, on. Okay, so this is the Essential Tarot book and card set, and it's um, the box got smashed in delivery, and it's a typical little. Uh, it's not much to, sp to speak about actually. In the box itself, um, I don't know. I guess it's good enough. Um, it tells you a little bit here that's just pretty boilerplate and it's published by uh, Peter Pauper Press. So I was, I'll just show you the cards. This, since it got smashed, this doesn't stay up like it should. Uh, inside the box, of course, you get the box of the cards and you get this little uh, booklet which tells you, um, you know, how to divide the cards. If you were going to give it as a gift, it's got a nice little place here where you can, you know, address it to and from, and uh, a nice little uh, jacket to keep the book in good condition. And then the book itself is just pretty standard. It has a couple of uh, spreads that you can use for the tarot. There's no special message in here, and it's got very standard divinations. It is a full-color book, and it's easy to read, so that's good. And I think this set is actually geared towards uh, beginners. And so uh, as far as that's concerned, then everything is perfect uh, so far because it's very clear uh, to understand. And, um, and so there you go. Uh, we'll put this back here for a second, and then we'll talk about the cards. So the cards uh, come in, again, just in a little uh, cardboard box. Uh, this is a uh, Hanson Roberts tarot deck, so that's who uh, designed it. 78 full-color cards complete with 22 major arcana, 56 minor. So, see, and card titles in five languages, uh, English, French, German, Italian, and Spanish. So that's handy. Um, the box itself is, is not a big deal, actually. I mean, it's just a nice uh, little box. It has a, a hard piece of uh, cardboard to keep everything in line. It's got a couple of introductory cards that um, don't really... I don't know what they serve, to tell you the truth. But um, So I'll put that back. And then the cards. 
So this was kind of a disappointment. They're they're beautiful. They're they're, they're nice looking cards, but they're very um, thin and cheap. They are made out of a kind of a uh, a coated material. So the one thing I was glad about them is that they actually are very easy to use. They shuffle really nicely, and the depictions on them are are fine. You know, they're actually good, uh, clear, easy to understand depictions. And so I was disappointed with the quality of the cards when I opened up this deck and the, this came damaged, and the cards were flimsy, and I thought, well, these aren't going to be good. But the secret uh, uh, sauce here is that actually these cards are really, they shuffle really well. They're not hard to use in that respect. They fit easily into your hand if you like kind of a, on the smaller side of a deck. And so, like I always say, I kind of spread them out like this so that you get a chance to see more of the cards than just a few that the uh, the reader will pull when we're doing our, our reading. And uh, so that's uh, the Essential Tarot Book and Card Set. Really, I always think it's for beginners. It's by Hanson Roberts. And um, I think it's fine for the price, uh, about uh, $16 to $18, if I'm not mistaken. Hey, I'm Mark. It's been my journey through tarot. I'm going to do it all again tomorrow if you want to come, so ciao for now. One, two, three. You really make a big difference. Thank you.